Hey everyone, and welcome to another Kano Reviews. Today we have a very special review, in that I'm going to do a review of the 2021 movie Dune, which was released last week in several countries in Europe, including Holland. I saw the movie during the weekend, and today in the afternoon, and thought there was so much to talk about that I could do a review for it on this channel. Now since I know that the movie isn't out yet in various other countries, I will make this a spoiler-free review. If you would like to see my thoughts in a spoiler review, then please let me know in the comments down below. Let's now dive deeper into this sci-fi blockbuster, which many people have claimed as the story of a book that could never be transferred to the silver screen. The story of Dune revolves around young Paul Atreides, who is the son of the Duke leading the House of Atreides, a very prosperous faction. The House of Atreides gets assigned to move over and govern the desert planet known as Arrakis, who has received the nickname Dune by many others. The value of this planet mostly comes from the spice that is gathered here, which is used for multiple purposes, of which one, and arguably the most important, is intergalactic space travel. Without the spice, space travel would not be possible, which is why it's such a valuable and sought after resource. But of course there is a different faction who sees this as an opportunity to strike at House Atreides, hoping to both gain a monopoly on spice and take out a potential threat in the form of Atreides. Within this turmoil conflict of houses and politics actually lies a very simple hero's journey story with young Paul trying to come to terms with the signs that he might be a chosen messiah lead to wage a holy war that will change the galaxy altogether. It's in that regard a very classic tale of a young boy who witnesses trauma and tragedy and will have to move on from that and become stronger and the leader and warrior he was meant to be. We have seen, heard, and read that type of story a thousand times already, and when one were to look at that, it might seem a bit weird as why Dune has become so popular or why there is so much fuss about it. But the real power of Dune, both the book, but in this case also the movie, is not necessarily its story, but it's the universe and the world building that inspire and demand one's attention and interest. There are so many different houses, different factions, each with their own beliefs, cultures, traditions and goals they have within this larger conflict. Dune has already been presented in a movie format before, back in the 80s, in a movie that is widely regarded as other trash. It's very random at times and might feel more like a bad drug trip than anything else. All the intricate details, like the beliefs and traditions of the vastly different cultures and families, are kind of swept under the rug. And here, in the 2021 version, director Villeneuve does a great job of trying to portray all those details to the viewer. There are many terms that get thrown around that might seem alien to a first-time viewer, but the movie tries its best to give context within these thrown out terms. It was part of this that made so many people say that this book could not be made into a film since there were so many different details with all the various races, religions, political parties, and that you could not convey that scope or grandness in a movie. Now in that sense, it is not perfect, because seeing certain scenes in the movie, like a particular knife that holds a great value to a particular faction, does not go into too much detail on why it's regarded as so valuable by that faction. And more than anything, when I saw those scenes, I had the urge to go and read the book. For yes, if you are wondering, I have actually not read the original Dune book, and therefore this review can also be seen as how someone will enjoy it who has not read it. But I think the fact that seeing all these mystical worlds, these varied factions and races maybe want to go and read the book, is worth something. Now, by the time of writing this review, I have actually started on the book by the way. I'm not that far in it yet, I may be at around 80 or something pages, but anyway, back to the movie. The movie itself is full of a star-studded cast, and all of them give great performances, in that the characters feel right at home and believe in the terms and thoughts they convey to one another. You never have the idea that an actor actually has no idea whatsoever what he or she is exactly saying, which has for example been the case with things in Star Wars. Christopher Lee, for example, has famously mentioned how we had no idea what he actually was talking about in the Star Wars prequels. Though the cast is great, none of the actors or actresses necessarily give a performance that stands out over one another. 
There isn't that much range for some of them, and probably my favorite performance in the movie is done by Rebecca Ferguson, who showcases a vast variety of emotions from being scared and fearful when her son undertakes the test with the box, to furious anger when later on she uses the gift of the voice to escape certain situations. Most of the other actions are a bit more straight lined, with favorites like Just Rowland or Oscar Isaac being the stern leader or mentor types. Jason Momoa is also very good and convincing, but yet again plays that fighter type that we have seen before. Now that doesn't mean that they are anything less awesome. I think all the actors are really cool and great, but for example with Josh Brolin, he does that badassery thing again, which is what we are used to from him as well. No real surprises there in that regard. Javier Bardem actually does also do some great performance, because it took me a time to realize it was him and mostly due to his voice. But truth be told, he is barely in the movie, as is Zendaya. The trailer kind of makes it out to be that she plays an important role, as does the poster by the way, but she is barely in it, even less so than Javier Bardem. Unless you count the many different dream sequences she is briefly in, without saying a word really, and just moving around in slow motion. It's not necessarily a critique point, but it's definitely a bit of a weird advertisement with creating the expectation that she has a far bigger role than she actually has. Stellan Skarsgård is also convincing as the terrifying and grotesque Baron, though with him it's mostly his design that stands out, as a few shots where they showcase how big and sickeningly grotesque he seems are the things that stick with you. He kind of reminded me as a fat human slug, which was an awesome design that I haven't really seen being done in many other products. So the acting is great, but it won't raise any eyebrows or take it to a new level. What is something that steals the show in this movie is the sound design and the music. Where of course most people associate movies with a visual stimulus, 2021's Dune proves that the audio is just as important of an experience. Everything sounds incredible and epic, from the dark rumbling of the spaceships that make the seats in the theater shake, to the music of the bagpipes that are played before the House of Atreides leave their ships onto their new home planet, to the incredibly scary and menacing way they portray the power of the voice used by the all-female Bene Gesserit. The voice is a power where these women can command anyone to their will, and it is utilized in such a cool and memorable scene halfway into the movie. We have heard menacing voices being morphed and edited in various ways in different movies, but most often they don't last an impact. But here, they almost make you feel like you have to obey and keep looking at the screen when it happens. For the fun of it, I looked up how they did the voice back in the old movie and also the audiobook, and none come even close to how powerful and commanding the voice sounds with Dune 2021. And the music is also amazing, with a score that is full of mystical chanting, hinting at influences from the Middle East. It's rather unique and praiseworthy that Zimmer, in this case, stepped away a bit from that bombastic orchestral score and gave room for these chants, the drums that echoed on as dramatic events unfolded. The chanting music itself also feels a bit mysterious, giving a great flavor to this mysterious and unknown universe in which you as a viewer want to know more about. I would not find it unsurprising if Dune 2021 would win an Oscar for Best Sound Design and Music. Its production design of course is also incredible, with a distinct look in ships that look like dragonflies, but also the clothing and the architecture for the different houses and planets are all splendid. Beautiful designs like the warrior's armor or the orange robes worn by the ladies of House Atreides make the whole world shown in this movie be all the more detailed and awe-inspiring. Now, rooms and interiors themselves can sometimes feel a bit sterile and empty, with sometimes maybe not as much detail within the smaller props, which has been showcased on how to do that in something like Lord of the Rings. I also would argue that, though of course the production design with Villeneuve's movies are always great, something like this Blade Runner film made a bit more impact due to the addition of color. But Villeneuve's movies are of course mostly known for its incredible cinematography, and Dune excels at this. There are so many beautiful shots, not only from epic vistas showcasing miles and miles of uncharted land, but also delicate beauty in something small like an interior room. Though some of these locations might lack a bit of detail with its props as said before, it complements in that sense the beautiful cinematography and symmetry. 
But while watching this movie, I had an important realization that made me appreciate Dune even more. Though I love other movies like Star Wars or The Avengers, I realized while sitting in a theater that most of those movies are just noise. They are noisy, loud roller coasters that throw everything at you. The definition of a blockbuster in their eyes is just to put as many explosions and laser blasts on the screen to overload your senses when visiting the cinema. But Dune does not do this. Yes, there are action scenes, but not as many and not as wild as in most other blockbuster movies. With Dune, the epicness of the imagery with grand vistas or awe-inspiring spectacles like the majestic sandworms linger and give you time to take in what is happening on the screen. This was already something I noticed in his style with Blade Runner. So many of the shots are beautiful and gorgeous and actually linger on for quite a while, giving you the opportunity to soak all that beauty up. And Dune does this too. A shot where one of the flyers zooms across the desert and the film takes the time to showcase the dunes as a golden sea is mesmerizing and lasts for a long while. A shot of the Sadaqar silently gliding down, their bodies being illuminated by a yellow sun. Or the intimidating presence of their introduction while a bone-shattering humming and chanting can be heard, reminiscing of Mongolian throat singing. It all is breathtaking and epic without showcasing a single explosion or punch, and succeeds in it to create an epic cinema experience without relying on explosions or quick cuts all the time. It's a good reminder of the power of epicness in cinema and what it can achieve by just looking at the screen without a thousand things coming at you at once. Now, some might actually be a bit disappointed that there isn't that much action in the movie. In fact, during my first time of watching Dune, there were a couple of teenagers, maybe 13 or 14, who laughed halfway through, maybe because there wasn't enough action going on for them. Now, I don't know for sure, of course, but to me personally, I actually liked that there wasn't that much action. In one of the dream sequences, there's a short scene of two armies fighting where Paul himself is also shown wearing golden armor, and I knew this scene from the trailer, and in all honesty, that battle looked a bit generic and too much reliant on CG. Again, if it were to dive into these big battles of CGI soldiers versus other CGI soldiers, it would have been just another one of those movies, and on that point, I think Star Wars would have done it better. The fact that the world and the universe is so vast and mysterious and me wanting to know more about it is what really appealed to me so. I did not need all the wars and combat we see in many other movies as I just wanted to know more about all these people, their cultures and their beliefs. Now the action scenes that are in the movie are very cool though also not anything you haven't seen before. There's one battle that is on a larger scale, which is the most visual impressive, but other fights often come down to hand-to-hand -hand combat with only a handful of soldiers. It's cool, but nothing memorable. As said, the most memorable thing about the movie was the world and its setting, and that is the real reason to go and watch it. It's to be introduced to this magnificent universe that feels real and believable. All these details I described with traditions, cultures, religions, and political beliefs are presented in a way which is convincing and does not feel ham-fisted or taken out of the blue. It does not feel anything that is created just to further the plot or to get a character from A to B without any good reason. Harry Potter is a great example where sometimes the world really doesn't feel coherent at all since there are no rules because it's all simply magic, so anything is possible. If the writer needs Harry to move out of an area unseen, the writer can simply conjure up an invisibility cloak, because screw it, it's magic so it can totally happen. Dune does not do this, and something comparable, though not in epicness in scope, is Mad Max Fury Road, which was also very convincing with the different factions and their mannerisms and beliefs, which conveyed really well on the screen with the war boys praying to V8, or even though fuel and gas were so valuable in that world, the war machine had the guitar player boosting the morale of the troops with its gas-fueled flaming guitar. So pretty much almost everything I talked about up until now has been positive with maybe a few things here or there that weren't bad necessarily, but they just weren't very memorable. Are there then critique points? Well, I do realize that most things I love, like all the details and the setting, are not necessarily due to the movie, but rather due to the source material of the book. And the book is a complete story, whereas this movie is only part one. And believe me, you will feel that by the end of it. 
In all honesty, all that the movie is, is just build up and build up. Where the movie begins so epic and grand, its ending is actually rather small and maybe a bit unimpressive. There's no real grand finale or climax you are working towards, and even though there is an important battle or rather duel towards the end of the movie where the implications and meaning are very important, it does not really feel like a great climax or good point to end the movie on. Now it makes you hunger for part 2, most definitely, and some people might say that then the movie succeeded, but one of course also has to look at a movie as its own finished product. From what I understand, it has not yet been confirmed that a part 2 will be made for Dune, and it all depends on if the movie will be a financial success or not. If it is indeed the case that there will not be a part 2, then this movie gives you some of the biggest blue balls by the ending and will leave a very weird legacy because it just feels like a prologue as a whole. And in all honesty, I'm a little bit worried. When I went during the weekend, the cinema was quite crowded, but I went this afternoon and besides me and a family member, there was only one other guest in the entire room. In that sense, I think that this movie is a great way for newcomers like myself to be introduced to this awesome universe and maybe then be convinced, like I was, to go and check out the source material in the actual book for the complete story. For those familiar with the source material, I cannot say how you will like the movie and if you think they did justice to it. But it's rare to find a movie that set up such a believable and detailed world to which I say it's definitely worth to check it out and be transported to this incredible, mysterious universe. Just don't expect an actual sci-fi action movie like so many we've had seen in the past. In the end, 2021's Dune gets an 8.3. I still think about the movie a lot, but rather than the movie, it's the source material that keeps me busy. I still have so many questions about how things work and how the gears move in the machine and I hope to get all those questions answered in the actual work by Frank Herbert.